In this video, I'm going to show you how we can master a track in GarageBand within the very same GarageBand project. Yes, it's a bit weird, and in this video, I'll show you how. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete. Welcome to Studio Live today, where my goal is to help you create, record, and release your best music. And today, once again, we're in GarageBand. This is the track that I'm working on for Steve, one of my amazing supporters over on Patreon. And we've been mixing and we've been doing some tweaks to this track in the last few videos. And now it is time to master. And I'm trying out a unique method here in this one, which I have done only once before. So this could be interesting for you and me. But what we're basically going to do is we're going to take this final mix, I'm going to export it as a WAV file, and then I'm going to import it back onto one stereo track in this project. I can then solo that track and master the track right here in this. The beauty of this is I'm going to be able to give Steve this whole project with all of his tracks and a mastered version, which he can then use, or he can choose to remaster it himself. So let's jump in and show you what I'm talking about now. So the first step we need to do is to close out of this project to save it. So we're going to tap here in the top left. It's going to save out this project. And there it is. It's called Chasing the Rain Final PJ Mix 3. Now, what I'll do, because I like to use my version control, I'm going to tap in the top right. I'm going to tap on this one and I'm going to duplicate it down the bottom here. So it should give me PJ Mix 4. So this means that if I make any mistakes, if I blow anything up, it's going to actually be okay. It's going to come back and I'm going to be able to regain my pre Previous settings. So now let's jump in to this final mix four just to make sure it loads up and it's all good to go. Now, if you're not familiar with this song, let's take a quick listen to it. It's a rock song and it sounds like this. So yeah, we've got our final mix down. Now, one thing I have done with our final mix is I've also added, I've used my uh, my FX trick here to add a master volume. So if you missed this one, check out the original video I showed you how I did this. But I need to keep this in mind because this is actually going to take, uh, it's got about 5 dB coming off this, which just sort of lowers it down and balances it out. It makes it a little bit better for mastering. But we'll hit done on that one. And what we're going to do now is go back out of here because what I now need to do is X export this as a WAV file. So if I wasn't going to master, if I was happy with the final mix, all I need to do is tap on select here in the top right, tap on my mix here, and in the bottom left, I'm going to tap share, and then we're going to share it as a song file. So instead of sharing the project, we're going to tap on song. We want it to be an uncompressed WAV file, 100%. So we're going to tap share on that one. And what this is going to do is it's going to go away and ask us where we would like to actually share this to. So now you might think, I want to save this as a file. How do, why doesn't it give me that option? Because Apple's new share sheet's a bit weird. What we have to do first is tap on open in before we actually get that because this will export the song. So what it's doing is it's mixing all those tracks together. It's rendering it down and it's going to export this song as a WAV file, which we can then save to our files. And then we can either use that straight away if we just want to use the mix song we don't want to master it, or we can bring it back into our project, solo that track, and add some mastering plugins if we want to further enhance the sound. So let's wait for this to export, and then we'll jump back in and show you how. So that's now done. We can now tap on save to files and choose where we want to save this particular file. So there it is. It's a WAV file, Chasing the Rain, final PJ Mix number four. And in just a moment... Come on, iPad, you can do it. It's going to give us a list of locations that we can actually save this to. And there we go. So what we're going to do is I'm going to choose iCloud Drive. And I'm actually, because I downloaded this, because uh, Steve sent me the project originally, I'm going to pop it back in my downloads folder just because that's where everything else is. Yeah, no, bad organization, Pete. And then we're going to tap on save. That's going to save that out. And just so that it's convenient, here it is. It's right here. It's popped it right here in this same folder. It's uploading it to iCloud as we speak. But what we can do, if we hit done in the top right corner there, we've now got this WAV file right here. And we can now bring this back back into our project. But first of all, I just want to show you something in Audio Share. I'll show you how this WAV file looks like and we'll give it a quick play just to test things out. Now, if you're not familiar with Audio Share, it's a great app. It only costs a few dollars and it has some excellent functions, including importing and exporting audio files all over your iPad or iPhone. So we're here in Audio Share. I'm going to tap on the import option here, go to our document picker. And then we're going to go come in and find that WAV file. So we'll go to browse down the bottom here. 
In fact, we probably could have gone to the recent items. Is it, is it right there in recent? Yeah, it is. Let's just use that. So we'll tap here on this one. It's going to bring in our WAV file, and there it is. So we can see here that we've got the, the opening of the, the song there with the guitar. We've then got the, the WAV file going all the way through. Now, there's a little bit of headroom, but what you'll notice here is that GarageBand does something called auto-normalization. I wanted to show you this before we master because you need to understand. You can see here how some of these peaks are actually going right up to 0 dB, at least on this side, not so much on this side. So... What it's going to do, it's not going to compress it or limit it, but it's going to auto-normalize. It's going to bring the loudest parts right up to 0 dB. So what we may want to do, and I'll show you this in a moment, is turn down the, the volume a little bit and then add in limiting to kind of squash the top of that. And the reason I'm showing you this now is that when we come back and you see a mastered version, you'll see the difference there. If we hit play on this one now. Yep, playing all good. We can come into the middle here. Yeah, it's, it's looking and sounding good. It's looking balanced. It looks like it's about what we want this track to be. And you know what? If you release this, if you put this on YouTube, if you uploaded it to Spotify using DistroKid or whatever, you'd probably be okay. But what we actually want to do is we just want to give this a little bit more overall volume, usually using some limiting, which is what we're going to show you in GarageBand in just a moment. So let's jump back over to GarageBand and show you what we do next. So back in GarageBand here now, we're going to tap on my Chasing the Rain final PJ mix number four to jump into this particular track. And what we're going to do now is up the top here, you can see this loops icon. This is how we can import an audio file into our track. So we're going to tap on that one and come in here and you can see here under files we've already got my final mix here so it has popped it straight in here which is super convenient if it wasn't right here all we'd have to do is browse from the files app down here tap on that one find the file in its location and bring it in here but let's tap on this one that will play it and now what we actually want to do is drag it in so if we tap and hold drag this file in and go to the very bottom it's going to give us a brand new track here so we release on that one and it's going to pop it in, and there it is. There's the final mix. Now, don't hit play at this point in time. Let's hit mute on that straight away. If you play this along with the rest of the mix, it's going to be at double the volume, and it's going to sound quite dreadful. So don't do that there, but let's, uh, let's get rid of that just so that we can take a closer look. We'll zoom in here, and if we scroll down to the bottom, you can see there that there is our waveform. It's going all the way through the track, and it's all good. So now, instead of actually muting this, let's solo this now. So we've soloed that one, and we've still got this minus 5 dB cut here, which is okay. If we hit play on this one now. That's all good. If we come in here to, the, to a section. So you can see that it's not looking or sounding very loud because we can come in here and we can turn this off. So let's just turn off this 5 dB cut. So we'll come into here, we'll double tap bring it back to 0 dB just to take a listen to what it's going to sound like now if we come into a louder section and we hit play don't want excuses it's only this world is now gone way beyond. so you can see there that it's really pushing it's pushing right up to that 0 dB now if we were to come in here and start adding limiting or doing any EQ moves to do a, any mastering on this now it's actually not going to sound good. It doesn't have enough headroom to actually apply any of that limiting or any compression or anything else we want. So my recommendation is if you haven't already done this, jump in and use this tip to reduce it down. Give yourself at least 5 dB, if not 10 dB of headroom before you actually start. And that means you're going to be able to add in some plugins and it's going to still sound good. So again, we'll take a listen now. All good. So what we can now do is start actually looking at what plugins we may want to use to do our mastering on this track. Now, a quick word on mastering before we actually do this. Yes, mastering just on a track in GarageBand is a very simple way to do it. It's still effective, but there are much more effective or complex ways that you can do it. You can use something like Final Touch, which has ultimate control and is a great mastering app available on iPad. I've got a whole video series all about that if you want to check that out. And you can even use something like Grand Finale by Clev Grand, which is a great little mastering app as well. And of course, you can use a mastering engineer. So all of this mixing and mastering and things you can do at varying levels. The reason I wanted to show you this is if you've got no extra plugins, if you're just using GarageBand and you want to do it all for free, this is how we can do it. So that all being said, let's now jump in and look at these plugins.
So we're gonna come up here to the top left. We're gonna tap on our mixer icon there. We're gonna go plugins and EQ. Now the effect EQ is not really doing anything at the moment on here anyway. If we tap on our microphone option there, it's just gonna bring us in and it's gonna show us that we've just got a completely clean signal. We've got a tone knob and a squeeze knob there, which we can change if we want to. But just to be sure, we're gonna completely turn off everything. So we've got no plugins, we've got no EQ, we've got nothing going on here. So to add an effect here, we're gonna tap on edit. And any of these, we can actually add in an effect. So if we tap the plus, the green plus button down the bottom here, what I'm going to do is the first thing you want is a limiter. Now, there's no built-in limiter here in GarageBand, but luckily there is a limiter built in to your iPad or your iPhone. If we go to audio unit extensions over here and we scroll on down, we've got all of these, the AU plugins that come with iOS. Now, if you don't have these, there's a video that'll be linked up there and down in the description. Pause this one, go and check that out and then you'll learn how you can add these in. And then once you've got them, you can come back and finish this process. So we've got a bunch of different stuff here. We've got bandpass filters, high pass filters, high shelf, and a bunch of other things. The one that we want though, is the peak limiter. So we're gonna tap on the peak limiter there. And then if we tap on this orange button, we can come into our limiter settings here. Now the things that we wanna look at here are our attack time, our release time, and our pre-gain. And this will actually give us a little bit of a limiting on this track. So what we can do, and the beauty part of limiting, by the way, if you're wondering, why don't you just turn the volume up, Pete? Limiting does exactly what it says. It's like a brick wall limiter. It will stop it from going to zero dB. So you can turn the volume up as much as you like, and it will still stop it there at that highest level. So what we can actually do is we can leave the, the attack sort of around that 0.3 milliseconds, release around 0.1, 0.01. We're not going to go into detail about what attack and release are in this particular video. Experiment with them. Find out what works best for your mix. I know the purists are going to say, Pete, explain everything, but it will really vary depending on the type of track that you're mixing and mastering here. So trial and error experimentation is genuinely the key. Now, what we can do here is we can actually add in gain. So we can add in the pre-gain here, which is actually going to push up the volume and limit our song. So let's just do this now. We'll start with nothing and we'll hit play and I'll dial this up and take a listen and you'll see or you'll hear the difference here. In fact, let's go to a section where we got vocals and we got all the instruments. So you can see there, we put 5.5 dB of gain in here. Now you might think you've taken away 5 dB from your EQ, you've added 5 dB here. What's the difference here? Well, it's going to, you're going to see as we sort of bring this up, watch the meter up the top here. And now yes, GarageBand metering is notoriously uh, inaccurate. It's not going to give you a proper 0 dB leveling uh, on your meter, but it'll give you a bit of an indicator here. So if we hit play again here, watch and listen as I dial it up further. <laughs> Turn on my TV now and what do I see? Political leaders is still So that sounded terrible, right? I hope you agree that that sounded terrible. But what you notice there is we weren't limiting, we weren't clipping. It wasn't distorting the signal. It kind of was because as soon as you over limit, you do get a little bit of clipping and distortion. But what we'll do is we'll drop this back and we'll put this to maybe around seven. That's probably where we wanted to try it for the first time. So you can see there that it's keeping it around zero dB, but it's still coming up and down a little bit and it's not distorting or clipping too much. So let's leave it with this. We'll hit on done and we'll come back out here. So now what we could actually do, if we go back to our track view, by tapping on the top left there on our track view, uh, we'll come back here. Yeah, GarageBand is starting to slow down because it's saying, hey Pete, you got a lot of tracks here, buddy. You might want to, uh, you might want to watch yourself. So what we can do now is again, let's do that exporting process. We'll bring this now mastered, I don't know, very simple version of mastering, this mastered version back in to Audio Share and take a look at the difference and, the, and hear the difference in this and the original version. So once again, tapping in the top left corner to save out this version with the master. Because I'm me, I'm going to tap it, tap it again and duplicate it so that we've got a new version. We're now up to version five here. Now I've made sure that I've just got this one soloed track, just the master track soloed. We're going to select 
we're going to tap it and then we're going to share it. We're going to do that exact same process again of sharing our song, sharing it as an uncompressed wave and saving it out here. So we're going to tap open in, it's going to export and render this song out. Now it shouldn't take as long if I'm if my prediction's correct because it doesn't have to actually process all those other tracks. So it'll be a quicker export process, but I still won't make you watch it. I'll come back once we're ready to go. Okay, so we're back. We can now save to files and come back in. It's going to do our little thing again where it's going to try and find locations. Being a little bit slow again, I am screen recording at the same time as doing all of this. So it won't be this slow for you, I promise. Maybe. Uh, we'll wait for this to pop up and then we'll come on back. And there it is. So once again, we'll go iCloud Drive. We'll go to our downloads folder just so it's in the same spot. We'll tap on save and away it goes. It's now got that second wave file and this is going to make it easier for us because if we scoot on over to audio share again, we can do the same thing here. So let's bring in now this new file. We'll tap in the bottom left. We'll go to our document picker again. And it should be the same here. Yep, in our recent section here, it's going to be ready to go. We're going to tap on that one and bring in this new file. And then there you can see the difference. So before we even play this, you can see the difference. Now, the reason I went a little bit far with hyping this one up is that I wanted to actually show exactly what would happen. So this is a mastered track. This I've crushed a little bit too much because I took off 5 dB and then I added on 7, I think, whatever it was I did in the end. It's gone a little bit over the top. So this is where you can start experimenting with it. But if we hit play on this one... <laughs> So you can hear there, even just in the intro, we've got a whole lot more volume going on here. If we come into a section down here, you'll hear that it's much higher volume and it's much more flattened and crushed as we call it in mastering. So let's take a play. So this is, in my view anyway, what you'd call an overhyped master. So this is what a lot of masters look like. If you download a song and you plug it in, you can see that they look like this. But you need to be very careful with this because you can introduce uh, a little hints of distortion here and there that'll make it sound bad. And you're going to remove all the dynamic range. So what we need to do is find something that's a balance between that and that. That's what we're going to do now. Let's go back to GarageBand and take another look. So let's now jump in here to our mixer again. We're going to go back into plugins and EQ. We're going to grab this filter. And this time, let's bring this back down and let's do something a bit more subtle. Let's go 3 dB of gain and just see the difference here. So we'll hit done on that one. We'll go back to our songs here. We'll save that one out. And yes, we're going to have to re-export it again. So we'll select it. We'll tap it. We'll share it. And then we'll hit song. You've seen all this before. We'll share it out. And then I'll rejoin you when we've done all of this and we're ready to show you the next version. All right, so we're saving it out now. I, I do have one called the same number five. So we'll keep both, which will create a second version of this number five that we'll be able to see here. So it's actually, it's changed it to mix six. So that's cool. So we've got mix six here, which is the one that we're looking at. Let's now jump over, do the same thing again. Come on over to audio share. And we'll again import this in. And again, you don't want to just be looking at waveforms, but audio share is handy because it can give you a bit of a visual indicator of things that are not going right or whether it's exactly right. So we'll go into document picker again. Uh, it should be in our recent items here. If we're lucky, there we are. We'll tap on that one. We'll bring it in and drum roll, please. There you go. That's looking a bit better. So if you looked at the original version, there was our original final mix. So yes, it's hitting the peaks up here at 0 dB because it's been normalized. This one where we crushed it just to show you what you can do wrong. Yes, that's too far. This one, what's actually happened? The difference between this and this is not much except that we've just pushed up the limit on some of those and we've got slightly more volume. So if we hit play on this one now. Sounding good at the start. And if we come into a section over here, it's just lifted it up a little bit. Let's take a listen to the original one there. One excuse okay, yeah, no excuse problem. But then you come over to here. And it's just got a little bit more punch, right? It's pushing through, and this is the difference. What a lot of folks do is they'll do their final mix, they'll think they've got it sounding great, and it is, and then they play it, and then they compare it to another song 
that they're playing at the same time. And they're like, why is my song not punching through? Why is that other song sounding so much punchier than mine? Well, it's usually because of something like this. So if we come back in here to GarageBand, that is the key thing that I think you need to know about mastering. There's some other things that are obviously you can do with mastering, which we're not going to cover in detail. I've got other videos which I'll link up there and in the description that you can take a look at there. But if we just jump quickly back into our project here and take a quick look, uh, we'll load it back up here. There are other things that we could add in here. So of course we could come in here and we could use our visual EQ. So if we were finding the mix was a bit bass heavy, we could drop or raise the bass. Same with our mids or our trebles. And the other thing that you may want to do is add in some additional compression. So you can add compression in here. You can use things like reverb and other effects here, but the key is don't go nuts. And I'll use the words of Ian Shepard, one of my favorite, no, my favorite mastering engineer, uh, who has the mastering show, by the way. I'll put a link in the description to that, a really good podcast about mastering, he says, mastering should do no harm. So whatever you do with your mastering, it should make it improve on the final mix. It shouldn't actually make it worse. So experiment, learn, try different things. If you fail, it doesn't matter. You've got unlimited retries, but eventually you'll land on the sort of mix that you actually want. And remember, whilst visualization is not everything, if your final master does end up looking more like that, then you may just want to reconsider it because you've probably lost quite a bit of that dynamic range that could make your song sound really special. So there you go. A simple way to approach mastering here in GarageBand just with the stock plugins that you have spending zero dollars, zero pounds, zero euro to get this all done. I hope you found this interesting. There's two more videos all about mastering linked down below. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking or tapping on the Studio Live Today icon and I'll see you next time.